Hi, today I'm going to show you how to set up a reservoir model using ACC, the RASIM software package. So this software package is developed by US Corps of Engineers and you can set up any uh, reservoir model using this software to divert water or to operate the reservoir and if you want to even uh, make any water supply schedule or if you want to design any irrigation canal or if you want to even uh, supply water to domestic or industrial purpose you can use this modeling and if you have uh, the source of water as a reservoir uh, it may be one reservoir or more than one so today i'll show you how to set up the model for two reservoirs uh, within this study area because i'm working on this study area for this tutorial series and i already set up the model using heck sms and also working on swat model so it will be even familiar watershed for you if you already followed my previous videos and already watched my previous videos as well so what i'll do you can even download the software it is pretty simple you can go to this uh, us army corps of engineers website and then you can download it directly from this website and yeah definitely i'll give the link in the description below so that you can directly click on that and download it and after downloading you can just install as before so it is pretty simple i already downloaded and installed the software so let's move and you already know the location here i have streams and everything and you can see this watershed is locating uh, over the city of houston texas usa so that's the general description I can give you and let's move so from the start menu I can even search for HECRAS SIEM it's a 3.3 version I have installed and here you can see the first window so if you open it you'll see this watershed setup okay, yeah so for learning this graphic user interface it is pretty simple you'll see three different modules here watershed setup so they're calling it watershed and then you'll have reservoir network and then the simulation time it's pretty simple like hey okay, sms you have different module like basin module and you have to have this metrological module and then time series and everything but it is uh, pretty simple compared to those models but uh, the calculations means the pre-calculation now these are very dif difficult so if you already set up any model for a certain watershed and if you have inflow or outflow from every sub watershed so you can use those values as an input to this uh, model because this model is basically a connection between uh, reservoirs and the river networks so let's start at first you have to even go to file and then you have to open a project but here it's called new watershed okay what you have to do you have to give the name as new watershed means uh, i can give the name as a reservoir right uh, reservoir like uh, San us into watershed or i can give you like houston okay that's that's okay and i can give like test test simulation and then you have to select where do you want to even put it right so I can even go back and I have that in this folder I can select I have everything there within this folder and I can keep it there okay so the unit I'm selecting here it's uh, English in it anyway so most of the time because the data I prepared these are in uh, English in it and I also have that watershed projected uh, onto that projection system that is an FPS system and then i have to select the time zone from here central time gmt minus six and i'm clicking apply and okay and if i click okay i will see the summary of the watershed if everything looks okay then you can even click okay because after clicking okay you won't be able to even uh, edit everything you won't be able to change anything okay so that's why if you have to change anything like this unit or the time zone or any directory so you can go back and change it right now so this is the time you can change it so I'm just hitting OK and it will be like empty watershed so what we have to do we have to import the river network if you have the network as a shape file we can import it otherwise you have to even draw and here you can see we have the menu where you can see file you can see edit from edit menu you can see watershed properties impact areas project and 
drawing properties you can even explore all of this one by one and you have this option allow editing okay we'll, we'll do that right away and from view menu you can zoom in and we can add these layers and we can even see the system of unit and everything we can see there and if you want to show this grid you can activate that otherwise it will be gone and then from watershed it, it will see different properties and reports and tools and everything you have here you can explore and you can even get access to your quick start guide and user manual as well and you can even install a sample example for your learning purpose okay so at first what i'll do i'll check what are the directories and folders right within this software means they are already available so here you can see we have a folder called maps and within this maps we don't have anything right and the shared folder by default it will create this database and then study within study this is a configuration by default it will just create all these components but most of the time we don't need that these are the empty components and if we need that so it will call from these functions and we have this uh, watershed uh, project here so what we'll do we'll copy and paste our maps within these maps okay the shape files so from this model i have the shape file there so this is basically from the gis okay from the gis i'm just copying and pasting previously i copied and pasted and i have the folder there you can see what's in the shape file i have prepared this one so these are the pre-processing i'm not going to show you this right now so in future videos i'll show how to even generate all these input files so for the time being i'm going to show you how to set up the model if we have this data ready so here i'm going to paste everything and then we'll have access to our shape file we have river network and i also have other things so i'm just copying everything there and pasting so now what do you have to do in order to import all these shape files you have to even activate that editing so allow editing then you can go to view and then layers and you'll have access to this and here from edit you can even allow this one allow layer edit right layer editing otherwise see this add layer this option is not activated so if i click this one every time if you need to add anything you have to activate that so add map layer and then see you have access to this at first you have to even have the same projection for your watershed boundary and for the river network even you can draw everything the dot sasp is the one we can add and see directly we can see here and now you can see there and we can even change the color from edit and from properties and then because it's river we can select this color we can change the style and the weight as well okay so that is the river network we have so from this river network what we can do we can even directly convert this river network into uh, stream alignment because i can consider that okay we have one reservoir here and we have another reservoir there okay so we have to make this stream alignment so these are not these are now in uh, shape file so we have to convert it from shape file to the channel or stream alignment so we have an option otherwise what you have to do you have to select this option okay stream alignment tool and you can even click click and then it will create otherwise we have another option so we'll use that okay so if you want to even draw one single line that is straight so you can use this tool otherwise if you have to even use the natural process and all these streams are already there so you can use the automatic tool or automatic system i'm gonna show you right away and then you have other options there you can even use this tool stream node tool automatically if you use the way i'm doing now it will automatically create that node otherwise we have to use that and this this is the reservoir tool this will create reservoir but you have to keep in mind that every uh, reservoir or every channel or every stream will draw here will start from upstream to downstream otherwise the model will show you error masses so that is the first criteria you have to follow and then you have other options levy tool and you have option diversion tool you have like channel modification tool you have off channel storage and then you have other project tool as well and then you have impact area tool as well so today i'll show you only the model with reservoir and river network and you have this computational point tool if you want to even know the comp computational point here 
you want to know that okay how much flow will be here and if you have any water distribution system or any irrigation area if you want to know the demand what will be the flow rate here so you can put one computational point and the model will generate the flow rate there so we'll even cover every network we have here and every single point and we'll even provide some point as uh, inflow point because that is the outlet and these will be all inlet or inflow from this watershed so we have to even compute the inflow here from this uh, sub basin or sub watershed we already have that right in our uh, GIS here we can see for this point you have to be able to calculate right this uh, inflow from this basin or sub basin so this is how we'll get the value for this uh, point so what do we have to do you have to even go to watershed and then import and then stream alignment if you click there and you can see the river.shp right and then you have to select the database field name from this GIS. You can see if I open the attribute table, you can see a lot of options we have. So out of these options, I will use that hydro ID. So that is the ID of the stream for each segment. So I can find this from here, okay, hydro ID. So it is going to show you this ID. So it will create the channel or stream alignment for this for this specific segment and it will even create a node this node and it will separate everything if i click import it will drastically see it created and change the color you can see this is the node starting node and you have this junction right string junction and automatically detected everything so you don't need to do anything okay so what we have to do right now we will even add a reservoir there so if you click on that reservoir Okay, I'm clicking there for inserting anything here in this model. You have to press control. So I'm going to press control there. Okay, I'm going to press control there and then click and then I can finish that. Okay, my reservoir is just continuing up to this location just without pressing control. You can click and then you can give the name of the reservoir as reserve for a okay reservoir a this is my reservoir a and you can give the description that this is locating on this and you can provide the property that's okay this reservoir is for water supply or any other or irrigation purpose or anything you can give the description but i'm just skipping it for the time being so we can see the color this is our reservoir and then i have another reservoir there so these are the like imaginary reservoir that okay if we have reservoir there so you can add your base map and then you can even de uh, define the length of the reservoir from your base map as well so this is the option we have and that is pretty convenient to use in this modeling but it is pretty even hectic to generate all this input data because i'll show you in my future videos that you need to even know the storage curve for each of these reservoirs and you need to know the rule curve because if you want to even operate the reservoir you need to know the rule curve right so and you have to know the dam information and spillway information as well. So this will be our reservoir two or reservoir number B, right? So we have two reservoirs. Now, what we have to do, we have to even uh, create, see we have automatically created this uh, black dot, right? CP1 means computational point one at the very upstream of the reservoir and the very downstream of the reservoir. So this is CP1, CP2, CP3, and CP4. But we also need to know, right, uh, other uh, computational points, all this green dot. So what I'm going to do, because these points, we will use this point as inflow points, because I already have this data for this point, or I have one data and I'll use this data and I'll divide that. I'll show you how to do that. And we'll just collect everything at the very downstream and if you have any diversion from this you can use diversion tool and you can even use that but today i'm not gonna uh, show that because you need to know the diversion in my future videos i'll even add one by one okay so now i'm clicking on this tool computation point tool and then press control and press here okay then it is asking the name of the point so it is it, it will be CP1. So I'm going to give the name so that I can even identify the location, right? So it is just upstream of reservoir A. So I'm going to give the name as now CP, okay, CP0. That means it is the upstream of A, CP0. 
and you can give the description here not a problem okay I'm just now clicking and the other one this one right so this is another one so that is at the downstream of reservoir 2 even you can insert any intermediate point as well it doesn't matter you can even insert any point just you can do that and here control and press and that will be like cp we already have cp4 so that is gonna be uh, cp5 reservoir a right reservoir cp underscore reservoir a since it is at the downstream i'm gonna yeah, i'm gonna give the name as like uh, one okay it doesn't matter but here you can see we have another option because it is locating at an intersection right intersection of these two branches so here you can even select if it is locating at the station stream junction yes it is so i'm selecting that automatically it is detecting okay we have this so similarly i'm gonna even insert this point this will be uh, cp okay cpa i'm gonna give the name this way and even you can even edit every name later on as well so this will be like uh, cpa1 okay and that is gonna be uh, cpa2 and we have another one at the junction so cpa3 and you have to even specify that okay it is at the junction of between this so we have this and then i can add this one as well i'm quickly doing that cpa because this is just uh, tributary or distributary of reservoir a so that's why i'm just giving the name cpa up to this and i'll give another name there so we have three so now cpa4 then i can give this name as or i can give it as s5 cpa5 so then as cpa6 